Hey everybody, this is Chris from Nexus Core, and I'm here today to talk to you about Fenrir and a new direction for Fenrir as I will propose. So the starter for this deck is Fetter of Leather Lading. As you already know, he's a good unit to get things out of your soul and to make the soul into a field toolbox. Um, there's a lot of targetable rear guards in Genesis, so he's really good for if they wind up in a drop zone, you're able to G guard and put them back in the soul, you know, he's able to fish them back out. So without further ado, let's get to the grade threes. So the main grade three of this deck is Fenrir, um, as you would already know. Um, stride skill, soul charge three. Then on it, uh, then when you soul blast, you counter blast one. You superior fall. Then GB two is barely relevant. <laughs> Don't worry about the GB two. The GB two is terrible. I run two Sfava because having a revelation grade three is really nice, especially on rear guard when you're when you need to figure out what you're going to do for the rest of the turn. Um, whether you're gonna soul charge more, whether you're gonna draw more, and then she soul blast three to give herself plus five k. And since this deck also runs Hati, as you'll find later, she can make herself into a twenty six k column and potentially turn um, other units columns as well into more powerful columns. I also run two Minerva. Um, I run Minerva for the Grade One Rush. And as well as um, potential grade stalls, and to also open up my G deck possibilities, which we'll get to when I discuss the grade fours. Also, it's a really pretty card, uh, BT14. Managed to find the original art somehow. It's really nice. So, grade twos. The main focus of this deck centers around this card, Battle Maiden Medusa. She was a GBT08 sneak peek promo that most people kind of looked at and was just like, eh. Um, she's an on hit Soul Blast 3, buying two cards from hand. Um, random. Random cards from hand. I, thanks, Atlas. The opponent's hand. The opponent's hand. Yeah. And hit, I buy my own hand. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. It's OTT, but so much better. <laughs> So, um, I usually use this in, um, in conjunction with Taro as a more, uh, pressure, as a more, uh, bind heavy wise man, except it doesn't kill your opponent as fast, it's on hit, um, it's more so a way to pressure your opponent into guarding more so than with wise man. In this deck, I also run four Kotonoha. <laughs> um, as you know, she's, whenever something goes into soul, you get plus 1,000. She gets really big really quickly. With Gelga, she'll get like plus 8 instead of plus 6 because that's just how her skill works. Um, she's also on place revelation, which is good because you get to look at the top card of your deck. And again, waste no time in figuring out what you're going to do for the rest of the turn. Like with Fava. I run two Boulder um, Fetter Gyols. So, in case I miss the attack with Medusa, if I have Taros and Soul, I can go ahead and re stand her with his skill, which is on attack Soul Buster Draw, um, giving me another chance to bind more cards from my opponent's hand in anticipation for a big uh, Vanguard attack. Then I tech in one Twilight Regalia Hesperus um, for the on hit retire, which is good against different clans like Angel Feather with uh, Broken Nurse of Broken Heart, as well as um, individual units in other clans such as Horsa and Gold Paladin, who gets really crazy columns and things of that nature. Grade ones, I run four Shackle Fetter Gil um, Galga, which is what I was referring to when I was talking about powers with Medusa and Kotonoha. He goes to the bottom of your deck, Soul Charges two after giving plus three thousand and restanding a unit, and then he gives him another plus three thousand. So I usually stack a bunch of plus sixes on this card, which makes it a lot easier to pressure my opponent into guarding or no guarding which serves my purposes either way. 
Um, for my Sentinel lineup, I actually run a split between Goddess of Decline Hell and Goddess of Self Sacrifice Kushinata. So, with Hell, she can only protect your Vanguard, but she gets necessary unflips, which really help in this deck because it is quite counter blast heavy if you're running Fenrir and uh, at least the Grade 4 Fenrir and the, the Grade 3 Fenrir. This card protects your rear guards as well, but doesn't get the unflip. <laughs> Small sacrifice to pay, especially if I can't get Medusa or Kotanel Hob back onto the field through some legitimately crazy means like Lading or Fenrir skill. I run three Hotties because he gains power every time I Soul Blast. This is a very Soul Blast heavy deck. And as I was explaining with Fava, she's Soul Blast 3, he becomes a 10k booster. Almost for free. Almost. I, throw, I run three Mythic Beast Skulls because it's a stride fodder, gives me an extra chance to stride. If I run into either Minerva or uh, Svava, I can find this guy instead, and it just makes things a lot easier um, for getting into my stride phases. Um, for my trigger lineup, I run four Taros because this is what makes Genesis good, or at least playable. Um, she restands units, gets multi attacks off, um, ma makes it so that Medusa can get an extra chance to hit. And if she does hit, she gets to restand so she can buy two more cards from hand, hopefully, if I got the right stuff out of hand, since it is random. And then I run an additional two stand triggers in the form of Dreaming Dragon, which helped me not deck out. Because Genesis decks out very, very easily. Always important. Always important. I run two draw triggers. That being said, speaking of decking out, um, because Genesis doesn't really generate a hand, so I decided to add draw triggers. Plus, on Gar um, placement on Gar Circle, he soul charges one. So it's really good for stacking the soul to get Galgas and Taros and whatever units you might want to call out from soul in order to make your plays more powerful. I run only four criticals. I run the witch crit. So this the reason why I did this is because A, he returns himself to the deck, and B, because of the fact that if I find myself on a witch vanguard, which I mean I don't run witch grade ones, but in certain variations of this deck I do, like witch of Orange's Valencia or Witch of Grace Grappa, um, I can look at the top, I can draw the um, card and then uh, look at the top three cards from my deck, put one into soul and put two into the drop zone. So it's a good way to fill up soul as well as a uh, mulligan hand in case your draws are bad. And then I also run uh, four heal triggers. I run three of the GBT04 uh, Goddess of Youth Hebe. Um, and then I run one Witch of Big Pots Laurie just to piss off Matt. He does not like different art anything, so. <sighs> it's a little fun. Now for my grade fours. I run four Goddess of Seven Colors Iris because she shoves things that you put into your drop zone back into your soul for free. Basically, I see no reason not to run four of this card. Um, I run one Mythical House Guy Beast Fenrir. Um, what he does is he changes the Revelation skill to Revelation 2. Look at the, the top two cards of your deck, put one into soul, put one to the top of your deck. Um, he also does Counter Blast 1 to Soul Blast 3. You might either draw a card or put one card to soul and give your units plus, and give one of your units plus 3,000, give him plus 3,000 as well, which is really nice, especially if I'm on Medusa at that point. I run four Vandergans because he lets me look at the top four cards in my deck, gives me a chance to finish my opponent, also soul blast six so I can uh, soul blast four Taros out and restand an entire field. Um, if I don't kill him the first time, then I have a second chance to do it. So it's a pretty nice option to have, especially for um, those times when your opponent just has really heavy hands, like in Great Nature or um, um, Belial Owl Luard, which is going to be a problem. 
<laughs> from now on. I run two Beast Slayer Military Deity tiers. Um, what he does is Soul Blast 3, like the top card of your deck, and then gains Red Text, which is whenever I drive check a Grade 1 or higher unit, I get to Soul Charge 3. It gets through the deck really quickly, mitigates any chances of me not getting Taros and Galgans into Soul. I mean, there's still the randomness factor there, but it limits the um, amount of chances that I have to not get them into Soul. I run one Doom Brace, um, just in case I want to make big pressure columns with um, Kotonoha, Medusa, Svava, um, Hati, um, etc., etc. Um, could easily be a first stride, but I also, you know, still use Tears my first stride because definitely a good soul fixing engine. I run one Sabreeze because it's Sabreeze, and you know, if your opponent is stuck in grade two, you get to maul them. It's great. Now, I run three Regalia um, G4s. I run one Sager Flame Ultimate Regalia Demeter in case I'm on Minerva and I want to set up Earth, who requires a face up Demeter, I mean, it's a face up uh, Regalia G unit. Um, to even activate her skill in the first place. Really wish that, uh, you know, it wasn't the meter that we had, but it is what it is. We don't have a Regalia G Guard yet. Hopefully, we'll get one in set 11. Fingers crossed. Um, but yes, this has been Chris with Nexus Core, and this is my Finra deck. Have yourselves a nice day.